comma is the most frequently used piece of punctuation since it appears in a variety of ways in sentences. The comma is most typically used to separate items in a series. Essentially, the comma, which acts like a pause, individualizes entities on a list, whether those entities are expressed as single nouns, adjectives, adverbs, or even phrases. Here are some examples. Each backpack contained pencils, notebooks, crayons, construction paper, and a ruler. The large glass antique vase was purchased by that young couple. Rudy spoke slowly, clearly, emphatically. I drove to the bakery, to the farm stand, to the dry cleaner, and to the drugstore. Often in a sentence which contains a series separated by commas, the last item is preceded by the word and. While it is not necessary to place a comma before the and, it is helpful to do so to avoid any confusion. This comma is called the serial comma or the Oxford comma because it has been advocated by the Oxford University Press. It is not grammatically required in a sentence. In fact, opinions vary regarding its use. However, its absence could change meaning in a sentence. Here's an example. On social media, Willie follows his sisters, Adele and Madonna. Without the Oxford comma, the sentence implies that Willie is related to two famous vocalists, which is not the case. The sentence presents Adele and Madonna as a positives to the word sisters. This sentence needs the Oxford comma and should be written as follows. On social media, Willie follows his sisters, Adele and Madonna. With the Oxford comma, the commas present three separate entities. Take a look at this example. For the Environmental Advisory Committee, the town board appointed the high school earth science teacher, a hunter and a fisherman. This sentence does not contain the Oxford comma, so the meaning is ambiguous. Is the teacher a hunter and a fisherman, thereby being the only one appointed to the committee? If so, the sentence is correct. If three individuals were appointed, however, then the Oxford comma is necessary as seen in the revised sentence. For the Environmental Advisory Committee, the town appointed the high school earth science teacher, a hunter, and a fisherman. Some writers choose to emphasize the categorization of items in a series by separating each item with the word and or the word or. If that is the case, then no commas are needed. Here are two examples. The carpenter measured and cut and sanded and stained the piece of oak. In the library, you may read or write or study. But there's another feature to this rule. It pertains to items that are typically together. Words that are used in pairs are set off as one item. Here's an example. The luncheon menu offered a choice of macaroni and cheese, rice and beans, or soup and salad. So as written, the menu has three items on it and each item is a pair. In a previous example, I showed you how commas may be used to separate modifying words like adjectives and adverbs. Yet, as with many conventions in the English language, there are some exceptions. The first one pertains to adjectives. Don't use a comma before the final adjective in a series if that adjective is considered part of the noun. Here's an example. The students quickly exited the small, cramped, yellow school bus. 
In this sentence, the words school and bus are considered one entity. The second exception pertains to words that modify another word in a series. Typically, it will be a word that functions as an adverb modifying an adjective that follows it. Margaret's t-shirt was black, white, bright orange. The sentence indicates that the shirt has three colors. The word bright is being used to modify the third color. Therefore, it is not considered a separate item. As you might have seen in a previous video, independent clauses are frequently separated by semicolons. An independent clause contains a subject and a verb and can stand alone as a sentence. But sometimes a writer wants to join them. Commas can be used to combine independent clauses in two ways. If the independent clauses are short, you can separate them as you would any other item in a series. Here's an example. At the audition, we sang, we danced, we read. Longer independent clauses require a coordinating conjunction to follow the comma. Here are some examples. We arrived at the ski slope early in the day, but we learned that the terrain park would not open until noon. I had a great deal of homework in every subject, so I canceled my plans to go to the movies with Linda. Oscar submitted all his college applications by November 1st, yet he did not receive any responses until March 14th. <laughs> Commas separate items in a series. In order to avoid confusion, I suggest you use the Oxford comma. Commas are not needed when each item is separated by the word and or the word or. A pair of words that is typically used as a single entity should not be separated by a comma. An adjective that is considered part of the noun should not be separated by a comma. In the same way, an adverb that modifies an adjective should not be separated by a comma. Short independent clauses may be separated by commas. Longer independent clauses may be separated by a comma and a coordinating conjunction. Thank you.